the final installment of the Roni Kenshin saga with Shishio versus Kenshin, the third movie in this series. Let's jump into it on this episode of Movie Breakdowns. What's up, world? Welcome to the episode of Movie Breakdowns. I'm your host, Ali Zaka. And before I get started, is there a review you want me to do? Let me know. Please put in the comment section below and I get to it as best I can. And I also have a Patreon, Patreon slash Ali Zaka for $2 a month. Get the cut in front of everybody, get your review out right before you come on Facebook and YouTube. You also get trade reactions and trade reviews and much, much more content. Now, let's go ahead and get into today's review of Ronnie Kenshin 3, The Legend Ends from 2014. And what is this movie about? This movie is plain and simple. It's about Kenshin having to stop Shishio trying to take over Japan. Shishio is now in his battleship and he's pretty much in Tokyo. And so the Kenshin and the rest of the crew to stop him. That is it. That is simple. Plain and simple. And where do we leave off? This movie is, like I said, in the first, it's the second half of, of, the, Ken, of the Shishio saga. In the first movie, the second movie of the series, Shishio pretty much leaves in the battleship and Kenshin jumps into the water to save Miss Karu and wakes up on a, on a, a beach and he's taken by his old sensei, no other than Seijiro Sakai. I believe I pronounced his name right, but Seijiro. And Seijiro in the beginning of this movie trains Kenshin to learn the final technique. And the action scenes and the action sequences in this movie are solid. They, this movie delivers on it when it comes to action. Like the the training's montage between Seijiro and Kenshin is on point. Like mm, so good. Matter of fact, let me double check, make sure that dude's name is Seijiro. I could be saying somebody's name completely wrong. You know, it's Seijiro, Seijiro Hiko. So, I'm sorry, not Sakai, but Seijiro Hiko. And the action scenes in this movie between those two were solid. Training montage, great stuff. This movie is two hours and 14 minutes. And the first hour of this movie is like about the training. And then it's also about Kich, uh, Shishio finding out that Kenshin's alive and getting the government to work with him to put a hit, a bounty on, on Kenshin. And so the government's looking for Kenshin and they have to capture Kenshin to pretty much appease CCO so CCO doesn't try to take over the government sooner than later. And you have Saito who's also kind of waiting around in this movie for the final fight to happen. And Kenshin does fight Aoshi after he learns the final technique from his boss, he or from his old sensei. He fight Aoshi with the help of the Obi-Wan group that stationed in Kyoto, they kind of help him out in this missile. And that whole storyline in this movie bugs me still. The whole Aoshi storyline in this movie. And I'll talk about that in a little bit in my dislikes. But as far as the likes go, that action sequence was on point. It was solid. It was good. And... The action sequence overall, like I said, is solid and good. The music in this movie is solid as well. I love the music in this movie. The original score for this movie works so much for every fight scene, for every down scene. It was great. And I actually like how this movie was a little different from the anime, in a sense. Like, Miss Kyle was in a coma for my journey of the movie. Or I guess not my journey of the movie, but for the first half of this movie, she's in a coma. And... This kind of gives Kenshin time to focus on his training, and Miss Kairu's kind of like, all right, well, she's out the picture, and it gives something that Yahiko and Sonosuke Sagara to do to keep take care of her while she gets better. So I do like that. And then when Miss Kairu does wake up, they're like, we're going to Tokyo because I guess she over her over her Shishio going to Tokyo, so she just figured we're going to Tokyo because that's what Kenshin would be at the fight Shishio. So she goes to Tokyo, but Miss Kyra is actually out of the movie, sadly. Like, she doesn't really fight or anything, and Yahiko doesn't really fight or anything either. Sonosuke Sagara, who, for the last... The first movie, like, okay, sure. The second movie, I was like, why is he here? And the third movie, he is just there for the fight. 
he is literally there for the fight. Like he's hanging around pretty much, and then when it comes to final fights, he like he's helping Kenshin now, like he's Kenshin backup guy. Like that is pretty much what he is in this movie. Um, Saito is there for the fight as well, and the fights are good. I will say that the fights are good. And here comes my dislikes. The Alchi Senior Mori storyline with this Masao, which they never really fleshed out in the movies. So, like, the relationship between Masao and Alchi, you're kind of just like man about because it's, it's not fleshed out. Masao doesn't doesn't Google and ogle over Alchi so much like she does in the and romanticize about her like she does in the in the anime like where she just every time she talks she's about how she never little thing how cool he is how great he is and all this stuff like in the movie she doesn't say that and you don't really get a sense of like that she really pines for his attention and just loves to be around him no you just like yeah she just was disappointed how she attacked the obi Robin group and, and attacked okina and just like why would you do that and maybe you should change your way and that's what she tells Alchi, in which, for some reason, Alchi shows up in the final fight, which doesn't make sense as far as the movie goes. I get it why he does it in the anime. He was there in the battleground with Kenshin in the anime. In this movie, he's in Kyoto. How did he end up in Tokyo to fight? It doesn't make sense to me. <laughs> make it make sense, please. Because in the movie... You know the final fight scene was cool where they show how strong Shishio is taking on four dudes at once. But why did Alshi show up? Why did he show up? And then he goes, nobody can defeat Kenshin but me. And then he starts fighting Shishio and I was like, sure. It was a cool fight, but why are you here? Why are you here? I feel like it's my issue a lot of this, of this series is why are characters there that shouldn't be there if we're going to movie wise anime we get it we get it in the anime why it makes sense but in the movie is like no or when Sager what is the kid's name Sojiro Sojiro Seta when Sojiro fights Kenshin on the battleship there is a moment where Kenshin is showing like Sojiro that you don't have to be the strongest to win. And he beats Sojiro in his own game and Sojiro kind of like realizes he can't fight as quick because he's losing his speed. And Sojiro starts having a breakdown because because Sichio told him if you're, the, you're not strong you're weak and you weak die. And Sojiro was breaking down mentally in his fight and Kenshin was telling him like hey you gotta find your own truth kind of thing. But the movie doesn't really convey why that was such a big deal. The movie just make it happen. And if it wasn't for a scene for for Anji explaining to Sonosuke Sagara that doesn't really make sense to their fight about what Sojiro does, why um why I can't think of his her name right now, but why CCO girlfriend does what she does and CCO right hand man does what he does. Like if it wasn't for the, like if it wasn't for him throwing that the inf information out there the scene where Sojo starts breaking down, they don't really add much. It, it's, if you're not paying attention, it's a quick throwaway line. Like it, it, it's not a throwaway. Like it, it flashes to their little with their back, what they was doing. It flashes to their face, but then like it goes right back to the fight where Sonosuke Cigar is fighting Anji, which that's also a very important scene in the anime. But the movie, let's go with it, roll with it. It just happens, and it just happened between a fight between the two of them, which. It's fine. Sonoka Cigar tickles the dude, and I was like, why? Like, I, I get it. He tickled a guy, but why? Why would he tickle? And, and why did Anji laugh? I get it. You're being tickled, but you're in the middle of a fight. Why? Why did that happen? Why that happen? But anyway, like, it just, I feel like the movie really try to throw in stuff to please the fans, but you're watching as a movie, it, it doesn't flow well. And characters showing up or just quick things happening to characters that unless you watch the anime, you wouldn't understand what's going on here. So to me, like, that was some negatives in this movie. But other than that, I thought this movie was solid.
I thought it was a solid movie. I enjoyed this movie a lot more than the other two. And maybe it felt, it felt like a faster paced movie. But maybe because the majority of it was just pure action. With the background sprinkled into it. The groundwork already been laid down in the first movie. So all you have to do is just commit to it. And they committed to it in this movie. So good for them. Alright, so let's go ahead and talk about the cast and director. The director of this movie is Kishi Otome. He's the director of the movie. And the writers is Nobu Hiro Rasaki. Ras, wow. Wasuki, sorry. Who is the manga, the manga writer. And Sean Whitley, who wrote the English version. And then Kijo, Kiyomi Fuji, who's screenplay. Thought it was fine. Thought it was fine. There, the budget for the or not the budget. They don't have the budget on here. IMDb, but IMDb does give you the box office, and it said it made forty one million dollars plus, a little over forty one million dollars. So, I'm not sure that's a really good good for this movie, but okay. And cast. I already said it in the last reviews for this guy, but Takiru Saito, who played Kenshin. Thought he did great, phenomenal. Su, or, sorry, Tasuya Fujiwa Fujiwara, who played Shishio. I thought he did great, menacing, perfect, solid. Imi Taki, who played Karu, thought she did good as well. Mone Taka Aoki, who played Sonosuke Sagara. You know, he's grown on me. I think the actor did a great job. The actor did phenomenal. The writing for the character, just like, okay, sure, at this point. Yusuke Isiya, Isiya who played Ashi. Good, good job. Uh, Yosuke Eguchi, who played Saito, thought he did a good job. Taro Tsuchiya, who played Masao, thought she did great. And then Masa Haru Fukuyama, who played Seijiro, good job to him. And then Min Takanaka, ta na, sorry, Tanaka, Min Tanaka, who played Okina. Good for him. Sorry guys, my Japanese is bad. But yeah, I thought they did a good job. I thought the cast was great. I thought the cast delivered. And I thought the characters, when you saw them on screen, they looked just like the anime counterpart or the manga counterpart. So you knew who was who. Good job there. Any other thoughts? The music I think was great. The action sequences was good. There was a thing that Kenshin kept doing in this movie. I couldn't understand why, but he would run out and it like this this floor slide and then come back into the character or come back to the fighting sequence and I was always like why he keep doing it he did like four times in one fight and the camera work this movie was really good the practical effects was just as solid and the camera work were like for example the bird's eye view watching them fight Seashio was solid and the battlefields and all these different angles I thought was good I, I liked the camera work in this movie I thought the action sequences was good as well and the choreography the action choreography and the sword fights was solid I thought it was really really good I did notice that there's some back like you could notice background props or there's on studio set like when it was back home at the um at Kairos Dojo or when they was out in the woods with training you can see like the props and everything like the trees weren't really you know real trees I get it they're on a, on a set but you can really see it like I thought like the other two movies they, they did a better job of blending that in versus this one just like yeah this is a set guys we can see it but that's that's probably a nitpick of mine it's like I doubt people really know it's like oh no that's, that's legit a set but I, I know I just thought it was I thought the majority of this movie was good. There are characters who are get introduced and you think there'll be a big piece of the movie and then just tossed out like that. Matter of fact, the Jupon Gapana, they they don't really have time to shine in this movie. The only ones who really do are Sojiro, Anji, and then the guy with the the blind dude who shows up for half a second and then gets wasted by Saito. You're just like well, they made you a big deal, and you're apparently not one. 
But other than that, like the, Jubon, the rest of the Jubon Gabadon, I don't know what happened to them. I don't know what happened to them at all. Matter of fact, there's like 10 of them and not all 10, not all I guess 9 because one of them would have been out the picture fight. So, I, I it was kind of weird how they introduced him in the last movie and then this movie was just not there at all. I was like, oh, neat. Cool beans. Cool beans. But the final fight, which I felt like last like 30 minutes was solid. It was a good solid final fight. And I think it's a good way to end up end a fight. You know, they are basing it off the manga and anime, so good for them. They, they actually delivered that one well. That's about it. Is this a Friday night movie? Yeah, this is a Friday night movie. Watch with your friends and family. Have a good time with this one. And grading time. I'm going to grade Ronnie Kitchen 3. The Legend Ends. A B minus. This movie gets a B minus for me, an 80%. And the reason why is that like there are things that happen in this movie where I'm just like, if you didn't read the anime or watch the anime, you'd be like, where did this guy come from? Why is he appearing here? Just because Kitchen fought him middle of the movie doesn't give him a reason to show up in, T in Tokyo and fight the final fight. Like it didn't add up. There are certain things in this movie that the movie doesn't explain. Because the anime gives like anime and manga gives more details on those characters, and the movie just kind of like, all right, well we're gonna throw this character here, and we need to have this fight, but they don't explain why Sojiro's had a breakdown. They don't explain what Aoshi or so not Aoshi, but Anji and uh, Sonosuke have like why their fight is important. Really, their fight just comes down to oh you're on this ship, you're on this ship, let's let's butt heads, let's do this, and. It just like why his hits are so much harder. Like you see, you see, Sonosuke getting bloodied, but it doesn't explain why he's being bloody. Like there's moves that happen. For example, Shishio's fire sword. Like his sword when he swings it, it catches fire because of the f he can never clean his sword. So the, it's a really disgusting reason. There's human fat on there, and it, and it moves so fast with his with his blade that it catches fire, which is a horrible thing. And and the movie has the fire happening, but I can see somebody watching this. Be like, I don't understand why why his blades on fire. Like, why is these fire flames coming out? The movie doesn't explain it. It just happened, but the anime and the manga actually explains why his sword like sparks fire and explodes when he swings. The movie does it. It just happens. It literally just happens. But. In the background, props did annoy me a little bit. I could not deny that. But other than that, it was fine. I enjoyed this movie. I had a good time with this one. I was more intrigued, more engaged in this movie. So it's a B minus for me. If you see Ronnie Kitchen 3, The Legend End, what did you think? Please put in the comments section below. Other than that, see you guys in the next episode where we break downs and keep being awesome. Thank you so much for making it to the end of this video. I really appreciate that. Please don't forget to like, subscribe, and comment. If there's a review you want me to watch or do, let me know. Please put it in the comment section below this video. Also, you want to watch the last episode of Movie Breakdowns. It's right there. Just got to click on it and you'll be able to watch it. Thank you guys so much. I appreciate it. Love y'all. And keep being awesome.